Over the past few years, I've learned to read. Writing is much more difficult, but I've never been daunted by obstacles. I have pencils and paper, although I may not have much time. As I am writing these words, my tale is over. I have fulfilled the final task I set myself. It has only taken me about a month, which has perhaps been the happiest month of my life. As far back as I can recall, I have been in the bunker. Is that what they mean by memories? See, on the few occasions when the women were willing to share their stories, they would discuss events, comings, goings. Men. My memory begins with anger. Jeremy Sutton, PhD of PositivePsychology.org, describes the resilience of the human person after a significant life event. He provides that recovery is not effortless, for a new path is often formed. He continues, having a renewed purpose can often strengthen the resolve of those already resilient. Author Jacqueline Hartman is the personification of this idea, with her family fleeing Berlin during the Nazi invasion. In this unknown realm where all women have given up any hope of survival and escape, the main character exemplifies the idea that although hope may seem lost, there is always a way of perseverance. I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman. I was the youngest when we were locked up. The women had believed that amongst all the chaos that I was thrown among them and they just forgot about me. See, in my life, there were always things happening. At least so I thought. In my stories, things were happening. But in my life, nothing really would ever happen. And I thought this was unfair. And I realized then, alone and terrified, Anger was the only weapon against the horrors. Our conversations followed these lines. Attempts to recall the early years of recovery were fruitless. Apparently, the woman had awoken to an inner fog, accustomed to the new life in which they had led. They'd had husbands, lovers, children. Human beings need to speak. Otherwise, they lose their humanity, as, as I've realized these past few years. I have no longer seen these women as my enemy. I had earned my place among them, even if all I could do was listen. But this didn't last very long. Because suddenly, there was a major event. And now, I must describe this in precise detail, which I find incredibly difficult because of the sheer shock and amazement. It happened just as the guard was opening the hatch to give us our food. One of the guards put the key into the small lock of the little hatch, and at that precise moment, there was this terrifyingly loud noise. The guard dropped the key, not realizing what he'd done, turned to face the others before they all bolted towards the main exit, doing something they'd never done before, and ran out. That they, they ran out and for, for the first time since we women had been in prison, we were alone in the bunker. I quickly got a grip on myself, grabbed the keys, finished turning it in the lock before pulling it out all together with the bunch. I gave the door a push. It opened. 
I, I took a step back, clutching my hands. For I was holding the most precious thing in the world. I, I snapped out of it, escaped the room. The, the other women seemed as if they couldn't comprehend what was going on. Come on, I shouted. Come on out. We barreled towards the exit. Daylight? The, the, the sky was gray, but not, not the lifeless gray of the bunker walls. No. A strange emotion choked me, more precise and exquisite. When the other woman joined me, we silently basked in our freedom. We walked on for years to come, aimlessly, before we realized we would have to stop. I, I believe they didn't want to think, so as to not comprehend, so as to not have to face the inevitable. See, they believed that we would find towns, civilization, and I expected never to encounter anything less than those bunkers similar to ours with those women and ironically men. Who were not as lucky as we were. And I believe that the other women since that From that moment on, I, I was fully aware that one day I would be the last. All I had to do was decide which way to go. In about two years on my own, I came across a new bunker, one in the ground, and this one was the most luxurious one I'd ever seen. Oh, the most precious thing I found in that bunker? Paper, reams of it, and a box of pencils. That's how I was at last able to learn to write. The books helped me read, and I was able to map my excursions. It was clear to me that the purpose of our deportation and captivity would never be revealed to me through these abandoned objects. But even in the guards' quarters, I don't think I formulated that so clearly. What if they were in the dark as much as we were? I was electrified by that theory. I felt my feet dance and myself laugh. I was aware of that. I had only added another question to all the others. But in this absurd, strange world in which I lived and still do, it was happiness. Perhaps somewhere humanity is flourishing, unaware that a daughter of its blood is ending her days in silence. Perhaps I've tried to create time through writing these pages. I am writing to some unknown reader who will probably never come. But if that person does come, I will have a time in their mind. The reader and I, thus mingled, can constitute something living. As long as these sheets of paper in my handwriting lie on this table, I can become a reality in someone's mind.